Hi, it's again Sergei Chernek from Berlin Immobilien. Today is February 3rd, 2020. Uh, four days ago, uh, the Parliament of Berlin has passed uh, the law Bitpreisdeckel, uh, or it's possible to translate in English uh, rental cap or rental freeze. Um, according to this law, all the rents in Berlin will be freezed, capped for the next five years. There are legal maximums for every district, every building, every flat in the whole city of Berlin. And uh, you should, as a landlord, you should comply with this maximum. Uh, I believe that this law uh, uh, will be cancelled by court uh, because it's uh, quite unconstitutional. Uh, it will take some time, but meanwhile, starting with January 13th, 2020, with the retroactive validity of July, June 18th, 2019, the law is completely active. Uh, it is applicable only in Berlin not the whole of the Federal Republic of Germany, only Berlin. It's uh, law of the Federal State of Berlin. Um, according to this law, as I said, uh, the, all the prices are fixed. There is a possibility for indexation, inflational indexation update. That will be possible only on January 1st, 2022, and no more by then by 1.3 percent uh, even if the inflation will be higher uh, it's also unclear either the law will be valid until january 13th 2025 or uh, june 18th 2024 uh, it's also unclear either the law um, will be prolonged for more than five years or um, will be stopped in five years or maybe there will be kind of uh, exit from this law but uh, uh, not immediately 100% exit. So nobody knows. Um, for non-compliance with the law there is, there is a possibility of fine that is up to 500,000 euros. It's also unclear either we are talking about fines of 500,000 euros per flat, per landlord or whatever. I can only speculate that similar fine of 500,000 euros uh, was implied by Airbnb law that uh, prohibits uh, letting the flats for short rent and the real fines were, were approximately three, four or five thousand euros uh, per landlord. Um, so this law of uh, rental freeze, rental cap provides maximum rents per square meter of housing depending of three or four criteria. The first criteria is year of construction of the building and of the flat. Second criteria is presence or absence of central heating uh, that serves the whole apartment, not separated heating for every room in the flat. Minimum, you need a central heating for the whole apartment or whole floor or the whole building. Now, uh, according to, 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 to the table that is provided by law, the minimal maximum it's complicated but prepare it will be much more complicated so the minimal maximum of the for the flat that is built prior to 1918 and has no central heating has no separated bathroom uh, uh, would be 3.92 euros Per square meter and the maximum maximum maximal maximum uh, that is permitted by law 
is for the flats that were built um, between 2003 and 2013 with central heating, with bath, modern flats, uh, this would be 9 euros 80 cent per square meter maximum. Uh, if there are maximum of two apartments in the building, so semi-detached building, um, or one family building, uh, city house, uh, you are legally allowed to exceed these maximums for maximum of 10%. Um, if the apartment is equipped with modern equipment, you can uh, ask for extra one euro per square meter. Uh, uh, above that, all the city of Berlin will be, not is, will be divided into three areas. Simple, medium, and upscale. Uh, it's still not done, it will be done. Uh, in the upscale areas, you are legally allowed to require 74 cents per square meter above the uh, permitted maximum. If the flat is located in the medium area, you are allowed to, you, you are obliged to uh, to require nine cent less per square meter, nine cent less beneath the legal maximum. If the uh, flat is located in the simple area, you are obliged to uh, to require from your tenant twenty eight cent less beneath the legal maximum. Um, so pure legal maximums are impossible, either 74 cents above or 9 or 28 square cent, uh, or 9 or 28 cents less per square meter. Uh, what types of real estate are uh, considered by this law? We're talking solely about the residential real estate. Uh, what is residential real, real estate? Residential real estate is the real estate that is that has status of residential in Grundbuch, in the uh, land registry. Um, there are some types of uh, real estate or apartments, units, that are excluded from this law. These are, first of all, commercial uh, real estates. They are not included in this law. Um, garages, offices, shops, warehouses. Um, uh, these are real estates, apartments, that are commissioned before January 1st, 2014, built and commissioned. Um, uh, also, excluded, there are some other types of flats that are excluded from this law. Uh, these are flats that were modernized and renovated with the cost that are comparable with uh, building of a new apartment per square meter. What is comparable? The law doesn't say. Uh, the dormitories are excluded. Dormitories for pensioners, for students, for workers, um, um, and all other types of people. Um, uh, there is a clear explanation what a dormitory is. It's actually, it should be the whole building not a flat or a couple of flats in the building, it should be the whole building and there should be an administration of this dormitory. Without these two criteria, it's not a, a dormitory. 
Uh, you cannot call dormitory a big flat that you rent to, say, six or eight students. Um, uh, the flats that are rented or led by registered nonprofits or governmental organizations. Actually, um, uh, you can say that the law uh, give, gives some kind of uh, security for its uh, um, uh, for people holding its debt. Um, uh, another exclusion of this law is uh, the flats that their landlords, owners, got uh, kind of financing subsidy from the federal state of Berlin for renovation or modernization. Another type of the flats uh, that are excluded from the law are the flats that are already been binded by law for any kind of uh, maximal rent, even if this maximum is above the maximum uh, of the current law. Um, probably, not for sure, probably from this law are excluded flats that are rental to the commercial firms for their workers. I'm not sure, check it. Um, also, maybe from this law, I excluded the apartments that were never rented. Uh, check it with your lawyer. Um, by the way, by this law, as a landlord, you're uh, obliged to show to the new tenant the previous uh, rental agreement with the previous tenant. Uh, so actually, what does the law require? As I said, you should show to your tenant the previous rental agreement if you make a new rental agreement with new tenant. Uh, the law does not require conclusion of new lease rental agreement. Don't make new agreements. Uh, the law prohibits demanding from your tenant the fee or the tenancy fee that is above the maximum uh, level that is permitted by law. The law also forbids you to accept money above this maximum. If the tenant continues to pay, you are obliged to pay the money back. The difference, only the difference. Um, the law actually... Um, tolerates uh, exaggeration of this maximum by maximum of 20%. So, for example, if you are allowed by law to charge 10 euros per square meter and you charge less than 12, it's still okay, uh, but not more. Uh, the law requires you as a landlord by March 30th, 2020 to inform your tenant about the new law and about the new amount per square meter and for the whole flat that he's obliged to pay. Um, the law also requires you as the landlord to pay back to the tenant all the excess money that you got from him starting with June 18th, 2019. Um, by the way, as you pay money back, inform, as you contact and inform your tenant, inform him that if the law will be cancelled, the tenant will have to return all the excessive money he got from you according to this current law. Uh, Uh, if in your tenancy agreement you agreed with the tenant about the this or another kind of indexation, you are still allowed to inform him in uh, in the time due about the new uh, indexation step. 
you are not allowed to get this money but you are allowed to inform him about the uh, the agreement about the indexation according to the agreement it's very important because otherwise you will continue losing money in five years so continue informing the owner uh, the, the tenant about the indexation uh, um, Actually, all the all the persons that uh, have power of attorney from the uh, landlord, just like managing company managers, are also obliged and can be uh, liable under under the current law, and uh, are can be and they can be fined. Uh, the law does not require uh, the state or any kind of governmental organizations or agencies uh, to control the rents that are really paid. But uh, by starting with November 1st, 2020, the tenant can uh, file, file a complaint uh, against the landlord, not before. And uh, the uh, governmental agencies or uh, companies or governmental uh, organizations will be allowed to require from the landlord information about the current uh, tenancy fee being paid by the tenant and accepted by the landlord. And you have to provide this information if you are requested to do so. Uh, uh, there are three things that for sure do not uh, affect the maximum, maximum rent. Furniture and equipment. In this regard, what kind of furniture or equipment you have in the flat, it has no influence on the uh, maximal uh, uh, rate of the tenancy fee. Um, makes no sense to make an additional uh, agreement about the renting the equipment or furniture. Uh, limited rental period has no effect on the maximum. Uh, if you rent kind of uh, unresidential property together with residential, it also has no effect on the maximum. For example, you rent a, a cellar or a parking lot together with a flat, it has no effect on the maximum. Actually, nothing has effect on the maximum. Uh, actually, the, the law has two constraints. Uh, two restrictions or two roofs, however you call them. Uh, you are not allowed to require from the tenant more than the maximum provided by law, by, by law, by law. Um, and you cannot charge from the new tenant more than you were taking from the previous tenant. And actually, the less from two is valid. For example, you're allowed by law to charge the sorry tenant with uh, 10 euros per square meter, but your previous uh, lease agreement was, say, 7 euros per square meter, you will be obliged to charge 7 euros per square meter. Um, Uh, if you, as a landlord, have financial difficulties because of this law, you can uh, file a, a letter to the IBB, it's uh, uh, the Mortgage Bank of Berlin, it's a governmental organization of the city of Berlin or federal state of Berlin, 
and maybe if you provide all the paperwork necessary, you will be allowed to charge one euro per square meter more than you are allowed by the by the law, but no more than extra one euro per every square meter. Um, if your tenant uh, currently pays you beneath 5 euro and 2 euro cents per square meter, uh, in two years, by January 1st, 2022, you will have a possibility to raise the rent by but to the maximum of 5 euro and 2 cents per square meter if your uh, flat apartment complies with at least three of the five criteria I will mention in a second. Uh, you should, the flat should have unobstructed access from the entrance to the elevator or to the flat itself. It should be built in, it should have a built-in kitchen. It uh, should have uh, expensive modern uh, uh, plumbing uh, inventory. It should have also expensive modern flooring in most of the apartment. It's very important. Or an en energy performance of at least 120 kWh per square meter. That's all. If you have questions, ask us. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.